Hey, I am David for Big Bits, and in this video, we are going to be looking at another update on TradingView, and that is the signpost feature on the charts. This is a new drawing tool yet again. Then we're going to also look at some technical analysis because it's been a while since we've done some of that as well. So if uh, you're watching this in the future, wanting to know about the signpost feature, then uh, you'll have some historical TA to look back on. But for now, uh, as of today, we're just going to kind of take a look at things as they are after we cover the update. But first of all, I did want to share we did hit 4,000 subscribers on the channel, something I'm very excited about. We have uh, grown tremendously here in the last year compared to where we were. Percentage-wise, I think it was over two times growth on the channel. And I hope to have that continue on over the next year and we can continue to make more videos. But let's go ahead and get into the actual topic itself. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed already and you're watching the video, please go ahead. Uh, tons of videos, tons of value here. But let's take a look at what the signpost is in the chart window. This, of course, is a drawing tool. You just select the tool, place it where you like it left click it and then you can enter your own text on the actual tool itself now the thing is i haven't done this before so this is going to be my first time actually using this on the video so we kind of get an idea of how intuitive it actually is so let's go over here to my chart this is my development chart this is a text tool you can find this on the text drop down go to signpost now you can see it brings up your kind of crosshairs so you can target where you want on the chart. Let's do it right here where the price crossed back over that line. And let's see, we are going to have it say, watch this video. Let's see if we can do anything with the coordinates. I'm not entirely sure what that is doing. Vertical position percentage. Ah, so you see that adjusts the height vertically. What if we can make this negative? We can, so if you want to make it below, your signpost below, you just make it a negative. It's pretty simple. And let's see, this is the bar number. Let's see, so the further right is a higher number, it appears, so we went... Actually, it doesn't want to change the bar number, so that's kind of interesting that it wouldn't let you do that. Let's go ahead and change our vertical position back up to 20. It might be a bit of an issue, too, that it didn't save that number when we tried to change that one. I guess the invalid value reset those. So that's something to keep an eye on if you're wanting to change these as well. You might have your values reset if you accidentally choose the wrong one. I imagine this number might not be something they want you to actually change because we tried changing it in both directions. It didn't work. And of course, you can set your visibility here as well on your signpost. So let's see if there are any other settings for this. It would be nice if we had some color options. Well, it appears like they don't have any color options just yet. That would be really nice, especially if you're wanting to take screenshots of your chart. Um, I'm not really sure what this would look like. I imagine this is just using your charts theme to do the colors here because it does have the same color background as my chart. So maybe let's try and change the chart background color and see if anything changes there. Change it to this yellow color. Now it's white. Change it to pure black. It's still that gray. You can see it kind of transitions over at that point from white to black it's kind of interesting but yeah this is something you can use uh, it's kind of like a label this is more of like a permanent label that you can put in there i don't think you can do these with a script just yet this is just another drawing tool that you can use and yeah that's really all there is to this one of course the update is mentioned in the blog itself you can always check out their blog for all their updates and the way you get to those just click on their menu here, and there should be a what's new section on your menu. If there's something new, there'll be a little uh, badge notification out here to the side, and also on top of your menu, letting you know that there is something new to actually take a look at. That's how I saw this today. That's why we're taking a look at it. But that's pretty cool. Um, this can be pretty good, I guess, when you're going back and you're charting important events, say, 
I would imagine this might be related to their timelines feature that they've added. This might be something really cool to say, like, you know, on this day was the having. You know, obviously it wasn't this actual day, but, you know, things like that. Or, you know, XRP SEC issues, you know. You could have added that onto your chart. You could have known when a big event happened and might have affected price. So that's another one that you can keep in mind as well. Let's see, I think that's it for this particular change that we're looking at. And if you're done with the video because we've covered the signpost, um, I would appreciate it if you could like the video if you did like it and subscribe if you do like the videos because you probably like all the other ones. But we're going to continue on with some TA here. It's been a while since I've done some TA on the video. If you've been following me on Twitter, I do post uh, some kind of hints at TA. I haven't really been too active on posting my TA here lately, but there really hasn't been a lot to post, although I think the time is coming that there's going to be some significant changes. Let me go ahead and change my chart to my ideas chart. This is my main chart that I like to use to keep track of everything. There's a lot going on here. Okay, so these are our daily Bitcoin and also our daily Ethereum charts. Now, the most recent message that I put out on Twitter regarding TA was that I think we're going to get a pretty massive bear div to form on the Bitcoin daily chart. And I said this several days ago, and I said that the price could reach anywhere from 28000 to 30000 and it was before we hit $28,000 in price, and we still might hit 30000 We might even exceed that uh, temporarily, but I don't think there's any way that we just blow right past $30,000 like we did, uh, say, twenty one or 22000 um, and essentially what I'm looking at here, and let me change our layout and zoom in a little bit. Get everything to where you can see it. Let's actually use the zoom tool. You can see what happens a lot when you get a bear div, you get these huge bumps in price, and then you get a follow-up run. And what's happening on your indicators, and this is the one that I created, the stochastics. The stochastic weights advanced, which has tons of different indicators combined into one. We found that there was a divergence here based on the uh, built in divergence code that I was able to borrow from other indicators. But I don't trade specifically off of these. Uh, you have to use a little bit of intuition and you also have to use a little bit of uh, memory and recognizing patterns and looking at higher time frames and stuff. On the weekly, it was pretty obvious we weren't going to top out here. But what I do think is happening, you see how hard this indicator is struggling to rise back up despite this huge increase in price. It is not coming back up very quickly. To me, and my experience with my indicator that I have created, is that this is very much a signal that you are going to get a bear div form. Um, now, that doesn't mean that it's going to actually happen, and if you don't know what a bear div is, I do believe I have some videos about that out there. But essentially, let's go to our drawing tool here. You get this run up in price like this. It looks like my browser's running a little slow today for whatever reason. But you get that run up in price, but you get the lowering highs, which I anticipate to be somewhere around here, which... I think I also mentioned in my post was that this would run out until the end of the year. Um, it might not, it might top before then, but relatively, I think the strength is going to continue here for another couple of days. So it might top out, and you're likely going to see a massive bear, bear div here. I mean, look at how much the price increased over the same period of time. Went from roughly 25,000 to, was it actually 25? No, it went from 24,000 to 28,000, but the stochastic oscillator didn't go up nearly as much. And you'll see this is kind of evident when you look at the RSI, which is down here, but the bear div isn't as obvious when you look at the RSI. So I am a little cautious. It's hard to bet on a short when Bitcoin has been so bullish. So I'm definitely not gonna take any shorts and I've, wouldn't recommend anyone does because you know, I'm not a financial advisor and I'm not going to tell you what to do with your money, but it's really risky. 
uh, to say the least. But personally, I'm not going to be shorting uh, because it is dangerous, but I'm definitely also not buying at these levels. I'm very confident uh, that the price is going to come down somewhat, and if it doesn't, so be it. I've got plenty in my long term that I'm willing to wait on. But this is just a daily chart. So let's see if something like this will play out also on the weekly chart. Of course, our drawings are going to get smushed. And you'll notice here on the weekly, it actually is pretty impressive. Now, there is a chance for a bear div on the weekly as well. This midpoint here where we hit 20,000. You can see the week following we crossed under. Now it looks like it might cross back up, but in order for this to continue up into even higher overbought territories, you would have to imagine the price would have to go somewhere near thirty-five to forty thousand dollars to keep this up uh, with the momentum. Very hard to imagine. Possible, yes. That's why I'm not taking any shorts. But uh, I do think we are due for a pullback here probably right at the beginning of the year. Um, no telling how long that'll actually last, that particular pullback, but something to keep an eye on for sure. And again, if you're looking at that potential bear div, it'd be really tiny on the weekly chart. But uh, let's see, I might as well just draw on the chart what I think might actually happen. So you've got the indicator here, let's zoom in even. I can imagine you get something like this. You get that kind of twin peak effect. And then if our cycle is going to continue, it's going to do something like that. You'll get that little tiny bear div and then that slight decrease. Have the price come back down somewhere um, long in through here, which I believe that's around twenty-two to $23,000, which is the first point or the midpoint of that huge move up. And then... As it hits the mid Bollinger Band on the weekly, then we bounce and continue our move. Because if you remember the last bull market that we had, uh, I'm still on my drawing tool. The last bull market that we had, if you look at it on the weekly chart, and I need to correct the scale here, <clears throat> you'll see back in 2015, we started the bull run short, soon after. And the weekly Bollinger Band held really well as a bottom throughout that entire cycle. Now, it may not work that way this time, but there's likely going to be something that we find that will hold throughout the bull market. So wherever this correction lands, keep an eye on those moving averages going forward. I think they're going to be very, very pivotal. There goes my phone with a notification. Of course, I forgot to turn that off. There we go. Took care of the volume there. But yeah, keep track of important moving averages. And I'll try and do some TA uh, whenever we do get this correction that is certainly to come at some point so that we can keep an eye on when we think the bottom is occurring and what key averages or key areas or potential patterns there might be to identify key points moving forward in the bull cycle. Because if this is just getting beginning and the price may go to one to 200,000, like some people say, I'm not nearly that bullish, but I'm that hopeful. Um, but if it can go to those levels, then it's very important that we find those key levels where we can anticipate uh, key moves again in the future. So that if you want to make moves, you'll have a better than average chance, I would say. Uh, most likely, and again, I'm not telling you what to do or to continue buying and that this is a guaranteed bull market for a year or so to come. But these things, they, they are patterns. You know, like I mentioned, the pattern with the weekly Bollinger Band in the last bull market, there could be a similar pattern hold up in this particular bull market. And it's just something to keep an eye on. And one of the key things I wanted to note here on the weekly chart before we go off of it is the weekly RSI. Really insane. It's, um, I don't have the values showing up. Give me a second. Where are we now? 90.75. 
which is a very high number for RSI, particularly on a weekly chart. Uh, we got somewhere around, what was that, 90.31 when we hit 20K at the all-time high in the previous cycle, or 90.53 here or during the middle of that one. Those are the two highest by far in history. And the thing is, our last two have been above 90, uh, including the current one, that is. So the previous one was 90.18. The current one is 90.75. Uh, so this is a pretty historic couple of weeks that we've had. And further, uh, it just further makes me believe that the price is going to come down uh, relatively soon. But... I like to zoom out even further at more time frames. So we'll just take a look at the monthly as well. And isn't that chart beautiful? Look at some of these key levels that played out back here. That was really cool. The monthly chart is very interesting because with the stochastic weights advanced, and this doesn't really go back far enough. We're going to switch over to the BLX chart. It has more history. There we go. And these look really goofy lines because those are based on a log scale. But you can see we are probably somewhere in between here and here currently on the previous market. Uh, and of course, they're not the same. And nothing's going to be the same. And it's not going to repeat. But I would imagine since that was 2016, we are currently... <clears throat> time-wise, the equivalent of here in December of 2016, four years later, because of the four-year cycles. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Got a little bit of allergies. But we would be the equivalent of back here. But the, our momentum is increasing sharply, and our RSI has just reached overbought for the first time. And these lines are at 75 because these are the basic RSI settings. We didn't do that until February of 2017. So I think we're a little bit ahead of schedule. And I think we are due, even on the monthly, for a little bit of a blip to come down. Um, this cycle might move faster than the other ones, mainly just because of the monthly chart and where it is. And it might not even work like the previous cycles, uh, or at least not the most recent cycle. I know this one's kind of hard to see. I gotta take the Bollinger Bands off. I, I don't like dealing with those. But the last cycle was really slow and steady. And I know my lines are probably off here on the monthly chart. They match a little bit better on the weekly, but just bear with me here. I think we might see something more similar to this. You'll see we're at a kind of a similar level here. I think we might kind of slow down. But what's really interesting was that monthly bear diff was gigantic back there. We really didn't get a divergence on the monthly chart uh, in 2017. But just this kind of movement itself kind of looks reminiscent to what we're seeing now. But the moves percentage-wise, since this is a log scale chart, aren't nearly as high now as they were then. And it's kind of interesting to take a look at. And of course, some people are calling for anywhere from 100 to 200,000 somewhere in this area and if you zoom out on the chart like this that seems reasonable now my parabolic lines aren't the best I don't think uh, those are just kind of guidelines for me just kind of get an idea of where the bottom might have been and where it lined up with the other ones but it's nice to see moving averages keeping up above that and everything looking good on the monthly chart all right so I've went in to a lot of detail here on Bitcoin and where I think we are in the market. This is very likely the beginning to uh, late beginning of the bull cycle. And I say that just because I think this cycle might be moving a little quicker. If it's moving slower than that, then that's good because that means we probably got more, more room to move up. But let's see, let's take a look at a couple of others. I want to take a look at Ethereum. There's a couple important things to note on Ethereum. Of course, price looks amazing right now. It's $730 daily chart. We've already kind of talked about the potential bear div. That would also potentially play out on the uh, Ethereum chart, but Ethereum chart's a little bit different. It seems to be playing behind where Bitcoin was. 
So that's something to keep in mind. We might still have some room to go up, especially when you consider the all-time high back there. What was that, nearly $1,400? If we're going to head back up to $1,400 and reach the all-time high like Bitcoin did, then we're going to have to forge past some of these bear urgences. But I do think in this area where we're at right now is an area of potential concern. I do think we're going to get somewhere close to $800. And I've been talking about $800 for a while. Um, you know, I don't tweet a whole lot and I don't do a whole lot of the videos about TA much more. But when I have, I have talked about $800 on Bitcoin since we had these two peaks here and here that kind of stalled out here. Those may be temporary points where we hold up. And there was a little bit of support here when it came back down once the bubble burst. This might be a key area to pass once we pass this area. I think it's a pretty good signal that we're going back up to the all-time highs again with Ethereum. And the chart overall just looks amazing. Uh, Let's go ahead and take a look at the weekly. Now this chart is uh, somewhat similar to Bitcoin, but you'll notice the stochastic advance has not crossed down yet. I know my head might kind of be in the way. Let me move this over just a little bit. So the stochastic advance has not crossed down yet uh, where Bitcoin has. So we, like I said, we might be a little bit behind Bitcoin. Uh, which is similar to the end of 2017, beginning into 2018, where the Bitcoin bubble had burst, but the alts continue to run. We might have something similar to that, where at the end of the year, Bitcoin kind of comes down, alts continue to move up, eat up some of that dominance, and then the market really gets going, um, playing <laughs> between alts and Bitcoin uh, until the end of the Bitcoin bull cycle. But similarly, also, the RSI isn't nearly as high on the weekly as well. I want to see if there's anything important here on the monthly chart. Not really, other than the fact that we've said that we could be behind Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin, I think, on the monthly stochastic weights was a little bit higher than this, although not by much. So I do think that Ethereum is a little bit behind Bitcoin in these senses. And look at the Bollinger Bands. Where are we at right here? Those are negative already, aren't they? That's interesting. Um, yeah, the negative Bollinger Bands bother me, but I don't think it's too much concern, honestly. If they're gonna, if, if we're gonna have a huge bull run and Ethereum's gonna go above the all-time highs, then those are gonna have to go below zero. That's just kind of how it is. All right. Um, let's see if there's anything else we want to get into. I, I, I cover a few other things here. I did want to take a look at XRP just because I know that it is in a bad place. Look at that monthly chart, a bearish engulfing monthly candle. Uh, and if you haven't heard about the SEC news where they're investigating whether it might be a security or not, you probably should. It's a very important deal. I believe Coinbase stopped trading them or at least changed their books to limit only or something like that. A huge mess with Ripple and it's a quite a bit concerning. So something to keep your eye on, which might impact the entire market. But look at this daily chart. There's like no such thing as support. When you're dealing with fundamental news like that, it's hard to say how low this is actually gonna go. It might hold here, but things are really negative. And this is about as low as it, it's gone uh, in, the entire in the entire history of Ripple on Bitfinex. So, and I did that relatively quickly, too, just over a matter of a week or so. I'm definitely not interested in touching Ripple. I never have, and I don't ever intend to, uh, unless I can get through the SEC unscathed, which seems impossible. I would also take a look at basic attention tokens. This is one I've been following for a while here. I'm a little disappointed. It hasn't really done all that well. It had that one move up to 40 cents. Hasn't really had any new higher highs uh, in a long time relative to these larger highs. It's really unfortunate. It's such a good project. I'm using the browser now. I've been using it in all of my videos. Really good project. I would really like to see it come up, but the chart on the daily just does not look good for it. Take a look at the weekly chart. The weekly chart also does not look good. 
for basic attention token. It's uh, really unfortunate. You got some crossovers downward on the weekly chart as well. That's also not good. So we're going to have to hope for a big bull run to save this, a uh, big alt season to save that one, I think, here in the next coming months. Let's go ahead and take a look at Uni, it's something I've also been playing around with some. This is a relatively new coin, so our charting here on the weekly isn't going to do too much good. Here's our daily chart, honestly. I think it's looking pretty good. This one uh, looks a lot better. We found a bottom here. We ran into a little bit of resistance here, and this is probably going to be resistance for a little while. You can see this area. It only bounced once here, but this is a very new coin. Um, I forget what the price was when people were airdropped these, but uh, if you're airdrop these, you're probably going to be unloading these if that's your plan around this area to at least get your money back that you would have gotten around the time that you were dropped the tokens. But the moving averages look pretty good. Everything's starting to kind of line up. Momentum appears to be pointing up. If we can get a bounce in price up to nearly $5 here, it's going to look incredibly bullish because you're also going to get the MACD to flip over and the RSI trend to point up as well. There's a lot of, and I, I just now realized my head was in the way on those. But uh, yeah, you can get the RSI to point up and also the MACD to also come up as well. Let's zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. All right, let's also take a look at Link. I've been watching this one closely. It's a very good project, obviously. Got a lot of hype behind it. But it hasn't been doing so well, like a lot of the altcoins. Uh, even though it is DeFi, we've struggled a little bit here lately. There is this potential for the MACD cross and the RSI trend change. Momentum is pointing up, but the price isn't really responding correctly with that. And to me, that's a conflicting signal. This is something I would not want to take a short-term trade on. I am buying Link, honestly, uh, periodically now, just because I think it's a really nice project. And if there is going to be a massive bull run, I think Link's going to be brought along with it. So that's just fundamentally why I'm buying into it. But I'm not looking for any short-term trades on something that looks like this, where you got these conflicting signals, where you got price coming down. But indicators potentially pointing upwards, you would want a better confirmation than that. And you also have moving averages looking like they want to cross down. It's just something to keep a very close eye on. Um, let's go back out to the weekly on this one. We didn't take a look at that. This is a little bit uh, better, in my opinion. And I know the chart doesn't look that way at first glance. It doesn't look like it's going to be a really good chart when you take a, a glance at it. But from my experience, the forecasted upward move in the Bollinger Bands is huge. That's very important. Okay. But that's going to be short-lived because of that big increase in price here. So what's going to have to happen is this bottom Bollinger Band is going to have to hold, which I think that means that the price is going to kind of move sideways and through a channel here uh, from the, let's say, 9.5 or $10 range up into around the $14.5 range for a little while. That's just kind of my estimation on what's going on. And on the weekly chart, ideally, uh, when I look at the MACD, I like to see it kind of reset all the way back down towards zero. and then it'll cross back up somewhere closer to zero comparatively. And that's when I think we get bigger moves with um, MACD crosses. And hopefully by that time, some of these other indicators will look a little bit better as well. But right now your friend is the bottom Bollinger Band and the moving averages, such as the 50 and the 100 here on the weekly. So there's anything else. Um, did have a little bit of lumens. Those have been struggling here a little bit lately, and that's completely fine. This is a weekly chart. Doesn't look too appealing on the weekly, but it still has the chance to hold. 
on these moving averages and honestly these moving averages on the weekly chart look really good because they're about to come in alignment i talk about that a lot when i do my ta you want the 20 which is the mid bollinger band above the green here which is the 50 which is also needing to be above the 100 which would also then be above the 200 to be in a pure trend and right now we're getting to where we are going to have the 20 and the 50 above the 100 here in the coming week. So if it holds, which it did down here, if this holds, and let me get the other indicators where you can see them, if this holds that support on this mid band, the 20 MA, that would be potentially really good. All right. Ooh, there's one other one that I wanted to look at, and that was BNB, because it was actually moving a lot here in the last couple of days where it hadn't moved whole lot in a while and this one on the weekly chart looks really good it's nearing its all-time highs which is really impressive it's also really good because i've gotten a lot of bnb from uh, referrals on binance us from that video i did I had quite a few people sign up and if you haven't checked it out as a u.s citizen check out my referrals in the description of the video i have thoroughly enjoyed using binance us um, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles of some of the other American exchanges like Coinbase, where you have the easy earn program and uh, it doesn't, I don't think it's uh, quite as simple as Coinbase and it doesn't offer some of the other features, but what it does have super low fees, which is very important to me. It also has the recurring buys, which is important to some people. I manually do my recurring buys, but they have the best API and some of the best stuff and some of the best people working for them because their engine that they use on the back end is the same as the actual Binance engine for the most part, just kind of modified for the American servers. And it's really something else. It's really good and they are really quick at getting new tokens listed. They have a ton of tokens that are added. They added Uni within like a week of it being created. So they're pretty good about getting those sort of tokens on there, whereas Coinbase it takes years. Okay, I, if I wanna catch the new hot thing, I don't wanna be on Coinbase. This is gonna take forever. But okay, I'm sorry, I went on a rant about how much I like Binance US. I might be doing a video to compare Binance US with uh, Coinbase again, but I also wanna include crypto.com the earn program was really nice but there's a lot of things that i don't really like about crypto.com as an american uh, i think if i were based in another country things would be a little bit different i would like their program a little bit better i'm just trying to think if there's anything else it's been a while since i've done one of these nice long videos with you all and done a bunch of ta but honestly i do think that's it if you haven't already liked the video please please go like the video that helps me so much. And if you've watched all this video so far, then you've watched a lot of me talking right now. Hopefully you like my videos and what we do here and you'll subscribe. And uh, I really appreciate you watching the whole video. It means a whole lot to me and the growth of this channel. As I mentioned earlier on, we hit 4,000 subscribers. That's just amazing. But that's going to be it for now. Uh, happy New Year. Happy 2021 to all of you all who are watching this video when it comes out. But thanks. That's it for now. Have a great day.